this video, we're going to take a look at the Mask Builder node. So here in the library, I have just searched and you can see that we have the Mask Builder. It's actually part of the Mask Generators as you can find them here in the category section of the library. So let's just make an instance of the Mask Builder. Let's just left click, drag and drop and place this here into our graph. So the mask builder is actually used to create a custom mask generator. So for instance, we have mask generators such as metal edgeware and paintware. Using the mask builder node, you can create your own complete custom variation of one of these mask generator filters. So it's like a, a Swiss army knife of the mask generators. It's extremely powerful. Let's just go through the process of adding this node to our scene. So now briefly, let's just do a quick overview of the scene and how I have this set up. So to start, I have a material and I'm just using the base material node from the library uh, that uh, can be found here in the PBR utilities. So if we just kind of scroll down here, you can see the PBR utilities, it's part of that um, category. And so um, I have the base material, I'm feeding in uh, just a normal map that I baked. With this base material, I have this guy set to dielectric, and so I'm just creating a dielectric material. And what I want to do is I'm going to simulate using the mask builder, chipping away or scratching away at this top dielectric layer to reveal the raw metal that's going to be underneath. So in order to do this, I'm going to use a material color blend to propagate the mass that we're going to create here through the channels that I'm going to be working with. I'll select my material color blend and we'll take a look at the channels. So the first thing I do when using a material color blend is I set up the channels I'm going to use. In my case, I'm working with just the basic um, metal rough channels. So we have base color, normal, rough, and metallic. And so I'm going to take the mask and the effect that I'm going to create and I'm going to propagate this effect through the channels that I have enabled. Again, being base color, normal, metal, and rough. So now that we have those channels, let's take a look at the settings that I'm going to be using for these channels. So for base color, uh, this is going to be, uh, this is going to stand in for a raw metal layer that's going to be underneath my dielectric layer. So my color value here, I want to make sure uh, that I choose a value that's going to be appropriate for a metal reflectance value. Here you want to make sure that you're using a real world measured value. In my case, I'm just making sure that I pick a, a fairly bright range. So uh, for this raw metal, I want to make sure that I'm in this 70 to 100% reflective range. So with that you can see that I have a pretty bright value selected. So that's going to take care of our base color. Uh, for my normal, uh, I'm not going to mess with anything here. Uh, for the roughness, uh, I'm actually just going to pull my roughness value down. And the next thing I'm going to do is take a look at my metallic. Now again, my metallic, and then you can see since we actually don't have the mask in place, you can get an idea of the raw metal layer that's underneath of this. So I want this to be a raw metal. So I'm going to set my metallic all the way at full white. Uh, I think I might drop back over to my roughness and then I'll just pull this value down here just again a little bit more. So uh, just a little bit more shiny on that metal here. So that'll be the setup here for our base color and our base material. So now we'll get to the actual meat of this tutorial, which is creating uh, this, this grunge damage effect, or this custom grunge damage effect, I'll say, using the Mask Builder. So here we have the Mask Builder. If I just uh, hit the one on the keyboard, I can expand my channels, and you can see that this node is going to take uh, several inputs, which we refer to as mesh data. So here you can see that it needs ambient occlusion, curvature, position, and world space normal. So I'm going to take my world space normal and just plug this guy in. I'm not going to uh, work with any position data, so I don't need to worry about that. So here is my curvature. I'll plug this guy in. And then finally, my ambient occlusion. Let's plug this guy in. So now that we have this in place, I'll just hit three on the keyboard just to collapse these channels. Now with these maps, I could actually just plug these in straight to the compact material mode and these maps would uh, be placed in the appropriate channels, but I just wanted to expand those channels so you could see exactly what mesh data we're going to be working with. So now that we have the node in place, uh, let's go ahead and take its output and plug it into the mask input of the material color blend. So now that we've done this, we'll double click our material color blend and you can see the composited result here. So this dark area, this is again going to be my base material and this brighter area, this is going to be the raw metal that's being exposed uh, through this kind of damaged layer that we're creating. And so by default, this is what we get. Now, if we go to the mass generator, uh, we have several parameters that are going to allow us to uh, really tweak and, and, and fine tune what this mask is going to look like. So at the top, we have our basic overall global level and contrast settings. Uh, we're not going to worry about those right now. Uh, we have our grunge settings. 
And uh, let's just start with our grunge first. So with our grunge, uh, we have uh, just a kind of a stock grunge map that is working for us right now. But the real power about this node is that I can override this and supply my own grunge. And that's really how you're going to want to use this. So I'm going to take the use custom grunge and I'm going to enable this to true. And now you can see here on the inputs, I have a grunge input one and two. So I can actually layer two grunge maps together to, to further composite this effect. So what we're looking at right now is just basically kind of like the, just a raw curvature setting. So let's just take a look at some of these grunge maps. I've just imported in a few maps. Uh, let's just try this guy here first. And I'm going to take the output from this bitmap and just plug it into the grunge input one. And here is the effect that we're getting at these default settings. So now we want to start the process of tweaking on this custom grunge and the curvature. So let's select the node and let's go to the curvature rollout. Now there's a lot of controls for the curvature. The main two controls being the convex and concave intensity. So let's first uh, just kind of reposition the model here. We'll take a look at this top view. And uh, I'm going to go in and start to tweak this uh, convex intensity. So I'm going to pull this value up uh, fairly high. So here you can see on the convex areas, uh, we get more wear. Now, the next thing I want to do is take a look at this noisiness. And so I'll just kind of zoom in uh, fairly close here to the actual grunge area or uh, where this wear is on this edge. And if I increase the noisiness, like say fairly high, and uh, whenever you're kind of tweaking these values, it is good to kind of, you know, take the value up very high, see what it does. Uh, so you get a really extreme uh, example uh, and then you can back it off. But as you can see, the noisiness here is really breaking this up, uh, you know, a bit too much. So we don't want to do this. Uh, we also have the ability to change uh, the noise scale as well as the noise type. So for instance, uh, it was at white noise. Uh, what happens if I take this to cloud? Let's see what this does. So it just changes that noise pattern and you can get, uh, you know, different results. So what I want to do is take this to white noise and I'm going to drop that noisiness value down. So let's just bring this guy down here. And uh, this is looking pretty good. Now, you also have uh, chaos and chaos scale. Uh, again, this just is, is kind of uh, uh, speaking towards the actual noise. So here, if we just pull the chaos up, you can see, again, it's just really just kind of spreading that noise out. Uh, we definitely want to keep this down here uh, to zero, probably. Well, actually, I think I'll just increase it maybe a little bit more here. Yeah, something like that looks good. So you can see already that, you know, we're getting a pretty cool wearing effect here uh, around these edges, uh, especially on these convex edges uh, with this custom grunge map uh, that we're kind of feeding into this. Uh, let's also take a look here at our concave intensity. Uh, so let me just start to bring this value down a bit, see how this does. So in this case, I'll probably just leave the, uh, the concave intensity alone. Uh, one thing uh, I do want to tweak here is probably my AO intensity. Uh, so let's go over to the AO category here. And you can see right now that the intensity is up pretty high. Uh, let's go ahead and drop this value down. And so here you can see that in this area, I had a lot of noise uh, that was, uh, you know, affecting here uh, that I really want to kind of try to mask with this AO intensity. And so I'm able to do that here by just dropping that value or I could start to change the range and so on. But as you can see, uh, you have some uh, some nice control over how these uh, how these mesh data input maps are going to be controlling this effect. Again, with this uh, AO, we have the noisiness, the noise scale, and the noise type controls, uh, similar to uh, the ones that we had under curvature. So next, let's go to the scratches rollout. Now, we can actually add some scratches, and we have a slider here. And uh, let's just say if we crank this all the way up, we'll see what type of scratches we're going to get with this. And so by default, you can see that we get these scratches and, uh, you know, they're too large for this particular asset. So we're going to want to adjust the scale. So here I'm just going to drop the scale down uh, pretty low. And with this, I'm going to want to increase this amount again. Now, uh, just as with any slider in Substance Designer, you can actually double click this number area to open the numeric entry field. Now, in this case, I'm going to type in just like a super high number. And then I'm going to just crank my intensity up uh, pretty high. And so now I'm starting to get these scratches. Uh, and, you know, they're pretty sparse, but uh, it looks pretty cool. So like you can see, we've get one uh, here across this edge. And then, you know, we just get some.
placed randomly across the mesh, so that's looking pretty cool. So here I'm just kind of taking a look at the front to see what we can kind of do with this guy. And uh, with this here, again, let's just take our intensity up a little bit more to just kind of overcrank this effect. So the next thing I might do is uh, let's just drop back over to our grunge and see if we can kind of tweak some of this. Uh, maybe let's just see if we increase this intensity, uh, what we get, maybe just a little bit more. Uh, we can actually scale this grunge map if we need to, uh, if it needs to match, you know, a, a certain asset. And you know what, I don't think I like adding too much of this grunge in this case, so um, really what I'm wanting is this grunge is just to mainly kind of affect the damage around the edge. So I'm going to take this intensity back down probably, uh, you know, around 0.5 or so. So here I'm going to go back to my curvature. Uh, here I'll just increase my intensity again. And this is, yeah, this is looking pretty cool. I like that I'm getting some kind of this variation, like especially in this area where, you know, you kind of get some tight edge wear and then all of a sudden it just kind of, um, you know, protrudes out here with this little piece of damage here and looks kind of random. So now we can come back to our global control. Let's just drop this global levels control and see what this does for us. So that's just kind of helping uh, me just to get more of a kind of this, you know, a little bit more of a random uh, effect. So before we had just too, uh, too uniform of a grunge line here. So we might want to utilize something more like this here. And again, going back to that curvature, I think I'm going to tweak that convex intensity. I think it's just a little too intense. So here I'm just making a few tweaks uh, to what I'm working with. And we'll probably just go with something like this here. Here I'm going back to my scratches amount. I'm just going to up this number or this value. So now I'm going to go back to my global levels. And again, I'm just going to increase this value again. And I think the scratches are a little bit too uh, intense, so I'm just going to drop this scale down. And there we go. Okay, so uh, now that we kind of have this primary grunge working for us, uh, let's go and start to work with a, a secondary map. So here I have uh, another map uh, that has more scratches in it, and I'm going to uh, feed this here into the grunge input too. I'll go back to uh, my builder node, and let's go over to our grunge. And for the secondary custom grunge, I'm going to start to just increase this value. And let's see what this gives us. And so that's given us some nice kind of secondary no noise there. And uh, we may want to, you know, just, you know, bring that value down a little bit. Maybe it was just a little in too intense. If we just kind of over crank it, we can see what we're getting here. And that's just too much damage altogether. So let's just pull this guy down. Here I'm just adjusting the scale of my scratches again. Okay, so now that I pretty much have my effect ready, um, I can also take a look at some of these other categories that we have here. So for instance, we have position. I'm not really working with any positional data, so I'm not going to worry about this. Uh, we also have the ability to utilize the world space normal to intensify this effect based on any one of these directions. And uh, in this case, I'm not really going to worry about that, but you have that option here in that world space normal category. And then finally, there is this scatter section. Now, we have this input for scatter here under scatter input. And what this allows you to do is if you had uh, you know, a shape or a bitmap uh, that has a shape or something, you can feed this into the scatter input. And then you can use these controls to take that shape and just, well, scatter it across the, the, uh, the mask. However, in our case, it's not really what we're looking to do. Uh, we're just looking to create some kind of uh, you know, custom grunge uh, edgeware here. So as you can see, the Mask Builder node is very good for creating these custom mask generator effects for doing things like edge damage and weathering effects. Its most powerful feature is in the ability to add custom grunge maps, so that way you get a custom effect. You're not just using you know, one of the stock filters, uh, so you're able to customize this completely, and you have a lot more control over the actual curvature. So there's just one last technique that I want to cover, and that's how to use the optional mask. 
So the mask builder has this mask option. And in fact, all of the mask generators have the ability to mask the effect. And so while I was working, I noticed uh, that I have this area here, and this was really bothersome. And what this is, if we take a look at this on the, uh, the actual mask uh, generator uh, output here in the 2D view, we can see that this was just due to the, uh, the particular grunge map that I'm feeding in and just the way it was kind of falling on the UVs. Uh, and I couldn't really control this by just using these parameters. So when I run into a case like this, uh, that's when I'll utilize this optional mask input here to the effect. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the space bar and I'm going to uh, just grab myself a new bitmap. And I'm going to choose from new resource. And for the background color, we're just going to set this to white and we'll click OK and OK. And so now we have this bitmap node. And what we're going to do is we're just going to use the painting tools here in Designer to just remove this, um, this area. So here on the parameters, I want to make sure I set this to grayscale. And I chose white because uh, white is going to be opaque. And I want this to just hold out or keep all of the information that we have thus far in this mask. And we're going to paint black into this bitmap to remove some of the sections here. So let's just feed this here into the optional mask input. And you can see again, since this was white, no change is taking place. So we have the mask builder loaded into our 2D view. So let's single click the bitmap node. And that's going to load the bitmap painting tools. I have the brush tool here. And I'm just going to zoom in on this area. And I'm going to paint this out. So here I'll just start to paint. And here we go. A little sloppy, uh, but it just kind of serves the demo purpose here. And so now you can see that uh, we've gone in and we painted out that area that was giving me that issue. And so now, even though I have this mask in this area, I can go back to the mask generator and I can still go through and tweak all these controls and everything. And I don't have to worry about, you know, this troublesome area anymore. And so, like I said, there'll be times when uh, you're working with mask generators that, uh, you know, it'll be, there'll be some area where you just need to just go in and just kind of manually tweak like that. And that's when you can just use the, uh, the 2D painting tools or even the SVG tool if you need to, uh, to create this uh, mask here within Substance Designer.